Um, before we dive in, uh, let's take maybe a bird's eye view into how our product, how CloudShell fits into the overall picture. Um, so contrary to other solutions, we're not an infrastructure broker. Uh, we're not tied to a specific cloud and we're not selling cloud resources. We're more bring your own cloud, private or public, or bring your own infrastructure solution. Where what we're offering is really a layer of management, uh, cloud management, uh, as well as making it very accessible to users to go in and create environments for their activities. Um, and you can think about like a CMP with DevOps and IT ops uh, really in mind uh, in terms of the usability and how the product is structured. So I've been working with many organizations by now, sort of designing and helping design a DevOps or a DevIT workflow uh, for various use cases. And these sort of personas or uh, key stakeholders uh, emerge each time, especially as the organization is scaling up their DevOps operations or DevIT. Um, and this is something I think that is very ubiquitous. Uh, and I think that the problems that we're encountering and sometimes successfully solving are really around scaling uh, that, um, scaling these roles sort of trying to work together, uh, each with their own interest. So let me maybe give uh, my understanding of these roles. And you know, in various companies, there can be an overlap in those functions. But often we see uh, an architect, a DevOps engineer, uh, somebody who is responsible for designing the environments and designing the architecture. And he's mostly interested in keeping everything standardized. Uh, and you know, as he's very professional, he wants uh, environments that conform to certain standards. And if environments don't work, he's the guy who needs to go around and fix them. So to make his work scalable, we need environments to be very standard, um, across the organization. Then we have the IT person, administrator figure, and he's responsible for cloud cost, and he's responsible for cloud utilization. He's the one who needs to uh, worry whether there's a bottleneck in resources or whether there's too much spend. And like Shashi mentioned, uh, more and more of cloud spend is going into dev and test. Uh, and finally, we have the end user, the team member. And in some of the use cases we encounter, this would be the sales engineer who needs an environment for a demo, or a developer or a tester that needs an environment to test a specific feature. Um, and this guy's mostly interested in getting his environment fast and being very productive. So taking these personas into account, I just want to mention that in CloudShell, we sort of see uh, the product as servicing all three of them sort of breaking the silos and trying to create a transparent environment where they can work together. Let's start with, the, uh, with our architect, the designer, uh, and the way the CloudShell platform sort of meets their needs. So CloudShell provides a, a more visual way of creating environments. Underneath, it's still infrastructure as code. Uh, but we provide a, a visual-like uh, experience given um, known building blocks are created. And I'll touch on what these building blocks can be in order to start and create more and more complex uh, environments in a very easy way and repeatable way. But what do I mean by an environment? Uh, what is in that Vizier graph that I just showed you? Um, so our definition of an environment is very simple. It's basically everything you need in order to get started uh, and do your work effectively. So when we say full stack, we mean getting it to a working state. And it doesn't matter whether it's on the application configuration layer or the infrastructure provisioning. Uh, it's just taking care of everything in order to make sure uh, the engineer can uh, do his work or the sales engineer can run the demo. Um, specifically, we're talking about applications, spinning them up, configuring them, taking care of the data, which is huge for many organizations around getting the latest production copy of the data, maybe uh, transforming it before uh, using it for tests, uh, integrating test tools, uh, physical infrastructure as well uh, when required, or an on-prem da uh, data center, um, cloud native services, or maybe SaaS services that need to be uh, integrated into the process. So 
very contrary to maybe some cloud native solutions to solve similar problems, we're sort of taking a more holistic view at the whole uh, environment uh, and not just what's in a specific cloud. So let's take a deeper view, uh, maybe at application. Maybe this will give you a feel of uh, what we mean by full stack. So when we deploy an application in Cloud Shell, uh, we first, of course, map it to the right infrastructure. So from a designer or an architect uh, perspective, they would create uh, their model of the application in terms of requirements. They need to have certain ports exposed, some of them internally, some of them to the outside world. They need to use a specific image. They need to configure it, run a script, or, or configure it in a specific way. So we start with the infrastructure and map the requirements to a lot of boilerplate infrastructure uh, around network and security. We continue to connectivity, uh, where we support sort of transparently behind the scenes VLANs or VXLANs, if it's OpenStack or vCenter or something in the private data cloud, but also subnets and OpenFlow um, or, uh, uh, or Open Daylight, um, if it's uh, um, an SDN kind of network. Uh, configuration management tools, either running scripts or using a tool such as Ansible or Puppet or Chef. And finally, also, since it's a building block based approach, also uh, providing an overlay of functionality on top of that. So you can think of it, uh, if it's uh, a database, then it might be very useful to have the ability to define what it means to run a migration step on it, what it means to restore it to a snapshot, and have that functionality available as an action, so, sort of self-service as well, to the end user who is using the environment. So, and getting to that state of having this large catalog of building blocks might sound a bit daunting, but one of the benefits uh, of utilizing uh, uh, public cloud resources, um, as well as integrating with many tools, is that we can really draw upon many uh, of the available repositories. And that means out of the box we can integrate and draw uh, the from the catalog of applications in Azure Marketplace, in the AWS Marketplace as an example. Uh, images from Docker Hub or um, your binary stored in a JFrog uh, artifact repository. In addition to that, we have a community uh, that contains uh, over 130 uh, different integrations that are already there that can be just used, dragged in as building drop uh, in your Cloud Shell deployment. And of course, we're also a platform. So we have a very extensive de dev tools and SDK uh, that our users continually use to uh, create their own integrations or building blocks that they can uh, drag into their respective canvases. So I talked a lot about the virtual. Uh, I want to maybe briefly touch also on the physical. So our approach to physical resources uh, is basically to treat them like a cloud. And that might sound a bit presumptuous, but what I mean by that is simply that you shouldn't care. That the user coming in should say, yeah, I need that. And I don't care if necessarily that means spinning up a VM for the duration of when I need it and then tearing it down again, or whether it means allocating that specific, specific port or device to me and making sure that it stays uh, allocated to me for the duration of my activity. And somebody else might get a different port or a different device. That creates a sort of a cloud-like uh, experience. And does, it, does this integrate with NSX and ACI? So we can orchestrate NSX as well. Um, I don't think we have anyone using that uh, currently. Um, in addition, uh, similarly, just like with apps, uh, we have out-of-the-box shells or building blocks for many types of physical uh, devices and virtual appliances that can also be used uh, to sort of get started without having to go back and start developing these integrations yourself. And then the the value uh, becomes even more emphasized when you're talking about hybrid environments. Uh, because as we treat physical resources like cloud, and we have applications as well, it becomes extremely transparent to the end user which part of the blueprint or architecture they're creating will eventually be uh, used uh, using the private data center, and which will use the public data center. So they can create uh, uh, the overall architecture and CloudShell will take care of much of the orchestration needed in order to create the connectivity and make sure there is, again, a working environment that I can start uh, working with. So creating these environments, uh, we talked about the designer. 
We now come to the second persona that I mentioned uh, in the beginning of the presentation, which is the IT person or uh, IT administrator or IT manager who's responsible or accountable for cloud costs and accountable for making purchases, purchasing decisions for new equipment and so on. Uh, and from their perspective, uh, they have a catalog where they can start applying policies and govern the use of these environments. And they can prioritize by business activities, they can prioritize to different groups, they can set limits on expensive environments maybe, or uh, the maximum number of environments that can be spun up by a specific group. And the main reason here is that we give them control. Because uh, one thing we're encountering in many large organizations is that uh, with dev costs really ramping up, and, uh, and as Shashi mentioned, uh, there is a sense of, you know, it's not an open checkbook. How do we keep control? How do we not impede developers uh, to do their daily work, but at the same time sort of get a grasp of what is happening? So one side of it is setting policies, of course, but then the other side is getting insight into what is happening. Uh, and remember, since we're activity-based, basically you spin up an environment for an activity, we can give a lot of knowledge that is not on the infrastructure level alone. We don't tell you how many VMs were spun. That's not very useful. But we can tell you what was the cloud consumption for a specific type of activity uh, in Cloud Shell? What was the, cloud, what was the resource utilization uh, for a specific type of activity? And we can merge the two uh, uh, types of information together. Finally, we get to the end user. Uh, and the end user who just wants to spin up uh, a VM or start a demo or get a development environment running has a very simple view in which he can schedule the environment for a specific uh, duration. Uh, sometimes maybe select which cloud they want to use, and that is sometimes also selected automatically, again, based on the policies that are enforced by the organization, um, and then start working. Now, this is a, a, a user that's using the web, which is one scenario we're looking at, but we look at user in a broader sense. So for us, a user is also automation, is also uh, users using CLI or API access, uh, as well as uh, tools, other tools that integrate uh, with Cloud Shell. So to give one example, sorry, and we'll touch on that uh, very soon uh, in the demo. Um, some of our customers, specifically around the DevOps use case, really integrate these environments as a service into their whole CI CD workflow. And so what would happen is that we have tools like TeamCity, like uh, Jenkins, that are maybe CI tools. Uh, we have CD tools as well as uh, application uh, lifecycle management tools. And all of these sort of use the services the cloud should provide in order to abstract environments. So you know, taking Jenkins and spinning up a VM is pretty simple. But taking Jenkins and starting to define which, how, how does the test environment look for more complex environments. Uh, is something where we can help abstract that complexity. Um, in this example, uh, this is based on some of what our customers are doing with the product, which is basically spin environment for, for dev, then use these same environments sort of as a single source of truth about how to spin up a product environment all the way to staging and production, uh, running load tests on maybe a more uh, scaled up version of the environment, running security tests on maybe a more true to uh, form, uh, a more production-like environment to make sure you're really uh, testing the right things, uh, testing uh, various integrations, and finally getting a staging environment up. Ronnie, can a, um, regardless of what state the user is in, is there an, a possibility to, to build an entire set of machines, physical or virtual, within your, um, within your environment, template it, and then deploy that entire set out as well. Uh, are, you, are you able to build out those? Yeah, so Shashi mentioned our uh, new save and restore uh, snapshotting capability. And this is something fairly new, uh, but is also really exciting because it allows you to do just that. It allows you to go ahead create uh, the environment as you want it, and then snapshot that to be reused again as a new uh, blueprint uh, later on in the process. And I see the, um, the container platforms being referenced there. I assume there's no issue. Yeah, yeah, we can deploy to containers as well, uh, as well as to uh, um, 
public cloud and uh, private cloud uh, hypervisor. So, well, this let's say you're creating a, you're adding a new server, and in that process, it needs to be on a specific VLAN that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Will it go in and set your VLAN, your QoS that's needed, everything on the the network platform as well? Yeah, a very trivial example. Maybe I'll, I'll show that. It's really taking a few servers, creating a VLAN. And what we take care of is really all of the annoying things. So uh, we allocate a VLAN ID that's not currently in use and make sure that's allocated for that environment. We take measures to make sure it's isolated and ready to be used, but also connectable from the specific end user who's using it that needs to access that environment. 